Good day, I'm Askar Sharif with the latest news from Kazakhstan. Two workers died in the Arcelor Metal Timirtau mine explosion, two others were injured. The bodies of the dead workers have not been retrieved yet, while the regional prosecution office already launched an investigation. The accident at Arcelor Metal Timirtau mine in Karaganda left two workers sealed underground and two more injured. Since morning, the miners' families are crowding near the site. It's not yet known who exactly was left under the ground. The shift started at 5 in the morning and he never returned. According to the preliminary version of the accident, the tragedy was caused by a methane leak and a subsequent explosion. At the moment, we are working on venting the gas from the coal bed, after which the bodies will be retrieved. Information on the accident is updated every 15 minutes, and the specially created commission is working on the case, say the authorities. However, relatives of the victims complain that they are not being told anything. Marat was 27, and he has just got engaged. His future seems so bright. 162 workers were evacuated from the mine and the enterprise has stopped its operations. The Regional Internal Affairs Department has instigated a criminal case. At the moment, the investigation of the criminal case is controlled by the Regional Prosecution Office. The rescue operations are still underway. Leonid Yankovsky survived the accident thanks to his co-worker. The worker was lifted from the mine and didn't remember what happened, regaining his senses only on the ground. His condition is average. The doctors say that the survivors have only minor injuries, mostly related to the poisonings by the carbon monoxide gas. The recovery process should take about nine days. The Kuzimbayev mine explosion is already the second deadly accident this week. On Sunday, three workers died in a similar tragedy at the Kazakhmus mine at Satpaev. The extraction companies seem to ignore all prior mistakes and keep jeopardizing the lives of their employees, said the chairman of the Decent Work Labor Union in a phone interview to our channel. These people drill blast holes and check the wells. During Soviet times, if wells contained gas, all works would stop and pits sealed for five days until wells are fully ventilated. This system doesn't work nowadays. On Thursday, journalist Tatiana Trubachova and Jana Baitelova held a protest action next to the Independence Monument in Almaty, demanding President Nursultan Nazarbayev to resign. Find out more from the next report. Journalist Tatiana Trubachova and Jana Baitelova opened their umbrellas while next to the bas relief of the Kazakh president, who is now also the leader of the nation. The orange fabric is clearly marked with a sign that reads, No to the law and the leader of nation. I wonder whether this law also applies to his wives. The police who arrived at the square half an hour before the women promised to meet this curiosity at the Bostandik Department of Internal Affairs. Journalists refused, which seemed to actually excite the officers. This turned the action into a flirting session as policemen first attempted to confiscate umbrellas and then chased by Telev around the Independence Monument while Trubachova was escorted into the police car. I suggest you to disperse in orderly fashion, otherwise it will be considered an unsanctioned rally. The lone Jana Baitelova decided not to tempt her fate, to beat the prosecutor and left the scene with her other colleagues. Personally, I am against Nazarbayev not only as the nation's leader, but as the country's president too. He has been ruling for 21 years and needs to leave. Baitelova, however, was not able to avoid the prosecution as one hour later she was served a summons and reunited with Trubachova. Both activists were released late in the day and their hearings is scheduled for Friday. A street musician from Astana filed a lawsuit against Kazakh president. Adilhan Bazarbayev claims his constitutional rights for labor are being violated. In days of preparation for the president's anniversary, he was prohibited to play Dombra in one of the capital's underground walkways. A street musician from Astana, Dilhan Bazarbayev, is complaining to the court against Kazakh President Nursultan Nazarbayev, Astana mayor and the head of DIA. Bazarbayev claims that the law enforcement authorities are purging the streets before the upcoming celebrations of the city and president's anniversaries. The musician was driven away from his regular spot in the underground passage until July 10th. They say that I look like a beggar, but I explain to them that I'm not. Beggars do nothing, whereas I sing and make money this way. 
In response, the General Prosecutor's Office says that no one bans singing in Kazakhstan so far. Even the official representatives of the office, Nurgaulet Svindikov, is not sure why the police are not allowing the street musicians to do their job. <laughs> I'm not aware of prohibitions to sing on the streets. There are some regulations on the observance of noise level or sanitary norms in public places. And maybe this could be the reason in this particular case. I must emphasize that every case should be reviewed individually. Despite warnings of the law enforcement agencies, Bazarbayev continues to do what he does best, saying that it's very hard for a singer to find a proper job in Kazakhstan. The musician knows that he's not likely to win a trial against President Nazarbayev, but still glad that he created a precedent and did not remain silent about the issue. Meanwhile, preparation for the 6th of July, the day of the capital and the anniversary of the nation's leader, are in full swing even outside the country. On June 24th, Ankara saw the opening of the monument to Nursultan Nazarbayev. The solemn ceremony was attended by an official delegation from Kazakhstan, led by the lower chamber speaker Ural Mohamedjanov. The race between Astana and Ankara to install a monument to Nazarbayev was launched during the recent visit of the Turkish president to Kazakhstan. Back then, Abdullah Gül announced plans to raise a monument in his capital. Some time later, this was countered with a proposition of MP Tito Sizdikov to erecting Nazarbayev's statue in the central downtown of Astana. The deputy even insisted that it will be politically correct to do it before the Turkish government does. Kazakhstan, however, has lost this race, although the parliamentarian's proposal was followed by a similar project launched by the Kazakh Handagı Foundation, which plans to install a golden monument to the leader of the nation in Shymkent at the cost of $300,000. Three criminal cases were instigated after the daring prison break in Aktau. They will cover the deadly shootout, the wounding of a guard and the negligence of the colony's management. The Sultan Nazarbayev has assigned the general prosecutor Kairat Mami to take situation with escape of convicts under his personal control. According to the prosecution office data, as of today, 13 convicts still remain on the run, while the mastermind behind the escape was killed during the shooting. The search for other escaped convicts is held across the entire country. Allegedly, the escapers are members of a religious sect. This criminal case is currently under investigation and depending on the results, the prison's employees may be charged with criminal responsibility. The Aktau prison break could have been avoided. This is the opinion of Russian penitentiary system specialist Valery Gabisov, who has been studying the jail problems of the ex-Soviet countries for the last 20 years. At the same time, participants of the Moscow Forum dedicated to the torture issues believe the head of the colony and prosecutor must be held responsible for the incident. Participants of the Moscow's round table discussed possible reasons why inmates escaped from the Aktau prison. Some speakers believe convict could no longer bear the detention conditions, including the tortures. Experts claim that the number of victims could have been smaller, but in desperation people simply did not fear the gunfire. Instead of shooting the escapers, the police should have tried its best to seize them and find out the reasons. Perhaps the guards could have used non-lethal weapons or shoot escapers in the limbs. At the same time, letting convicts out and then catching them through operative measures is also a dead end. Kazakh authorities, who showed its incapability to control the country's prisons, are now facing this dead end indeed. Meanwhile, it's obvious that the authorities in jails belong to convicts themselves, with imprisoned kingpins acting like presidents. I assure you, had the prosecutor actually did his job, all this could have been avoided. He should have spoke to each of the convicts personally and normally he is supposed to keep prisoners like these under his personal control. The participants of the meeting in Moscow have outlined the shortcomings of the Kazakh penitentiary system, the history of which features a number of noteworthy cases. For instance, in 1990, the Akmala prison detainees threw a brick at a guard and managed to remain unidentified. In 1999, a convict has left the prison in the Pavlodar region on a tractor. This time, though, there is nothing amusing about the situation. The case indicates the urgency of reforming the penitentiary system of Kazakhstan, the country that chairs the OC and yet employs many old Soviet-style laws.